Integrating is about finding the area under a curve in a plane or the volume of a solid. There are a couple different methods that can be used to carry out these calculations. Which one you choose depends largely on the geometry of the situation. Let's start with an easy example. Here's the function y equals mx. Let's find the area under this line in the domain from 0 to b. We want to divide the region up into an infinite number of very skinny rectangles. The width of each rectangle is delta x. The height of the rectangle is the y value of the function at that point. The area of a macroscopic rectangle is length times width. Our tiny rectangles have a tiny area, dA, which is equal to the width dx times the height y. When we take an integral, we are adding up all of the tiny areas to get the total macroscopic area. I'm going to set up my integral and substitute out dA for y dx from our picture. y is not a constant. It is a function of x. Let's put that in there instead. The limits for my integral are given by the domain of my problem. The integral is simple to carry out. It's just the power rule. By the time I've applied my limits, I get my answer. mb squared over 2. Is that right? We know that the macroscopic triangle's area should be 1 half the base times the height. In my picture, the base is b and the height is y. But, as we saw, y equals mx. And at the maximum height y, x is b. So, we do in fact get the expected result. Let's look at something else. Here's a circle. Let's find its area. The rectangle method doesn't work well for this. If I draw my circle at the origin, the rectangles are equally in each quadrant. The areas in the first and third quadrant are positive, but the areas in the second and the fourth quadrant are negative. The total area of my circle is zero. That's a bummer. I could draw the circle entirely in the first quadrant, but this is still ugly. The lower limit and upper limit of each rectangle is different. Yuck. There's another method that we can employ that goes by a couple different names in different books. Some call it the ring method or the shell method. I call it the onion method. Here's how it works. First, let's define our circle. It has a radius, capital R, and an area, capital A, that we want to know. Imagine that the circle is the cross-section of a tree. If we look carefully, we would be able to see the growth rings. Each ring has a small area, dA. That area could be expressed as the circumference of the ring times the width of the ring. Let's draw an example ring at an arbitrary radius, little r. The circumference of this ring is 2 pi little r. The width of the ring is dr, a small piece over the overall radius, capital R. We can set up our integral and substitute in our values from our drawing. The limits on this integral are easy to see. The smallest radius of a ring is 0. The biggest is capital R. Completing the calculation gives us a familiar result. Let's look at some solid objects. The cylinder has a radius, capital R, a height, capital L, and a volume, capital V. We want to know what that volume is. We can do this with the onion method, too. Our first goal is to establish what a little piece of the volume, dV, looks like. Think of this as a paper towel roll. But instead of one big, long spiral of continuous paper, imagine that each layer is a single sheet. This is where the onion name comes from. If we unpeel one of those sheets and examine it, we can see our little piece of volume. The width of the sheet is the circumference of the layer. The length of the sheet is the height of the cylinder. The thickness of the sheet is dr, a small piece of capital R. That makes the little volume dv equal to 2 pi r l dr. We can set up our integral as we did before and substitute ideas from our drawing. The limits on r are once again 0 to capital R. We get an answer of pi r squared l, just like you would expect. There's an alternative way to look at the volume of the cylinder. Instead of using rings, we can use disks. Imagine taking our cylinder and slicing it like they do bologna at the deli. We end up with a very different picture. Each of these little disks is a volume element dv. The area of these elements are all pi r squared, the thickness of these elements is dz, a small piece of the vertical height of the cylinder. That makes dv pi r squared dz. And here we go again. I set up the integral and add substitutions from my picture. The limits on z are 0 to capital L. We quickly get an answer, and thank goodness it's the same answer we got with the other method. 
I want to show you one last example. Here we have Darth Vader. But this Sith Lord is a 3D puzzle. He is made up of a stack of cardboard discs. Each one of these discs has a cross-sectional area and a thickness DZ. Each slice of cardboard is a volume element DV of Darth Vader. If we add all of them together, we get the volume of the whole statue.